I'm Wesley Hunt. And I'm Rendon Hunt. And, and you're, you're in, in the, the hunt. hunt. And I also want you to know that as long as we are, as long as we open up our show with I'm Wesley Hunt and I'm Rendon Hunt, I will always be first because I'm older than you. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Although right now we're the same age for a couple of us. Let's start again. I'm <laughs> always, I will always get to say it first because I'm older than you. Well, I'm your elder. Uh, Wesley, you, should, you should show me some damn respect. <laughs> Well, Wesley, because <laughs> I've earned it. I've earned it by ten months. <laughs> You've earned it today. What is this? I don't. What is this? Because <laughs> what is this? you're the top fundraising congressional <laughs> candidate in the country. <laughs> I cannot believe you. <laughs> I did not see that coming. Now let's start that again. <laughs> I'm Wesley Hunt. I'm Rendon Hunt. And we make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Rendon. I, I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate that. Exciting times in the Hunt camp. Yeah, it is. It is. Good quarter. Very good quarter for us. And thank you. All jokes aside, I really appreciate it. Lots of work. Lots of support. Amazing teamwork best team that I could ever imagine is consolidated and I tell you what man we're doing we're doing awesome I'm not gonna let you minimize that like that okay that was a good quarter in the same way that Tom Brady had a good half against the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl in Houston <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a good quarter to be the number one fundraising candidate as a Republican, on Republican as a Republican on the Republican side, side. yeah I mean, geez, to, to do that as a black man in the Republican Party, yeah. which many naysayers would believe is not possible. Yeah. It's, it's what an accomplishment, man. It's fascinating, isn't it? I think this goes back to the experiment, not necessarily the experiment, but kind of why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Is to show that actually this country is it's all about values and who they want as leadership. And it clearly has less to do with what you look like. Yeah. This is just proof. This is just proof of this. You know, there's only, you know, two black congressmen right now and only one black senator. And yet, you're right. We were able to in have— In the Republican Party. In, in the Republican Party. Yeah. Actually, only two black senators on the Democrat side. Yeah. And obviously, there's more, um, um, there's more in the House. There's more black people in the House. But I think this past three months, to do what we were able to do yeah. to begin to build the coalition that we've built without even having a district— I mean, we just got a district the last week to run in, and we were still able to accomplish this. It's a testament to a lot of hard work by a lot of people behind the scenes, man. And, I, and I'm and i very, very blessed to be a part of probably what I think is the best team in the entire country. You know what I'm blessed to be? <laughs> I'm blessed to not be a politician, because you have to say the Bill Belichick lines and all that kind of stuff. Well, I'm way better and I could, I could, yeah. I could just say what a, you I could be pulling a money gun. <laughs> <laughs> I could just I, I could just say what's on my mind. It's kind of like when I whatever I used to. Right, 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 right. Please tell me I'm better than Bill Belichick. You're so like, better. Yeah. If this is Bill Belichick, what would he say? It, it, we had a good quarter. Next quarter is going to be better. Um, there were a lot of people that raised money. Uh, I ra I raised more money. Um, you know, next time we're going to go out and get them. We're going to raise even more money. Questions. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Coach Belichick, uh, what are you going to do next time? I already said that. We're going to raise more money. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you going to raise another million dollars next quarter? Well, we have three months uh, to raise another million dollars, and we're going to raise a million dollars. And we're going to get on phones. We're going to call people and ask for that money. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so come on. I'm better, I'm better than Bill you're, Belichick. You're very Belichick. You're okay. very Belichick. But it, it is one of these. <laughs> this is hilarious. It is it is one of these things where, and I I got to had the pleasure of introducing you to number one a number of these little uh, fundraisers and stuff. It's it's this piece of, and that's part of who you are. The the humility that you bring to the table as a person. There's that party line, and hey, we have a good team. We're blessed, and all that kind of stuff. That's there's true. nothing wrong with that stuff. It's all good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, I'm not poo pooing any of those things. I'm not saying that I wouldn't say the same thing if I were in your shoes. But I get the opportunity to say, dude, this is awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. This is, this is, this is the other side of failure. 
Yeah. People who weren't there picking up pieces when when things didn't go the way that you want. This is how you build this up. And that's part of what I wanted to talk talk about at the beginning of this podcast is how this all has come together. Yeah. Because I do think that there's this wonderful marriage of preparedness and good timing. Yeah. Because if you were to look at this whole landscape of how things played out, okay, <laughs> and how this district was chosen, and I called you on this. <laughs> if you didn't know the backstory, it looks really fishy, okay? It's not. It is, it's, it's not. It's totally not. It looks like 2020 election fishy, okay? <laughs> that fishy? Like, that's what like, fishy. <laughs> it looks Florida ballot counting fishing. <laughs> like like two thousand? Yeah. Two thousand Florida. Like Bush v. Like Gore. Gore like Florida weird. ballot counting fishy. Okay. And this looks like this looks like not getting results back for the district a month and a half after the election, like we just saw last year. Like the final count we didn't get for a month and a half. That like, level of fishing. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, it looks weird. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. And so I do think it's in, it's important as we look at the outlay right now to share with our listener what's going on like like tell us what i mean what's going on with the numbers what's going on with the endorsements where are we in the campaign because people who support us and and people who are looking to think about ways how can you get people like wesley hunt in congress they need to know how things are going yeah. Like what? What is what is the scuttlebutt as we say in the Navy? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, uh, Texas got two new seats. Uh, one was placed in Austin. The other one was placed here in Houston. These are you know the top three places of growth in, in Texas, and so it kind of made sense from a census standpoint to put those two new seats here in these areas. And it just so happens that the new seat that was drawn here in Houston consists of a lot of Congressional District 7, the district that I just ran in for the last couple of years. And then it also goes up north to our old stomping grounds. Yes. Spring, Klein, Cypress, all the way up to Tomball. I mean, do you remember playing Tomball? The red, the, the red cats, the red cats, yeah, in little league football. I remember the I mean, red cats. This is, do you remember swim team? Oh yeah, remember swim team? We're swimming against all these neighborhoods and everything, yeah. and it's it literally is a second homecoming because you and I were born and raised on the north side of Houston, but then traveled into Congressional District Seven to go to middle school and high school yeah. for, at St. John's, and so this this ends up happening after we you know we lose the last election. And then the redistricting happens, and we get a seat, and we are looking at this like, I mean, this is where we, this is literally the best case scenario. And I didn't know this. Yeah. At the time we lost, I did not know that there would be something like this even available. Yeah. This is, this is, this is parenting, too. As you, as, as we are raising young families... Sometimes you don't want your kids to go through anything negative uh-huh. or bad. You don't want them to have any hiccups or missteps or, or anything adversity. of that sort. We or, try so hard to shield our children from adversity. But in reality, now that you look back on this, oh man, aren't you glad you went through that? Absolutely. We're we're way better. Aren't you glad? Like like you you are fundamentally a better and more resilient better. and more learned person yeah. because you've gone through that process. We're way better. And now not only that. You're in a position now, we always want to jump to the end of the story without seeing the other pieces of it. It's the thing that's wrong with sports in this country right now. You don't ever see their practices, Mm -hmm. right? Everybody gets up on Saturday morning and watches their team play, and you didn't see the grueling workouts at 5 o'clock in the morning. You didn't see the restrictive diets that they were on. You didn't see when everybody else was going out and partying in their name and wearing their jerseys on when they were sitting down watching film. Yeah. You didn't get to see any of that. Yeah. And as we think about this, even for our kids, we want to restrict people from having these growing. As a brother, it was hard for me to watch that and watch you go through that. Yeah, but at the same tough. time, man, We're this so is better. life. It's life. It's life. And then in the loss, you're given a choice. Do you quit or do you pick yourself back up and try again? I mean, we were back on the saddle within a few days after we lost. Yes. And if you look at just our social media, what we learned from that, how we were able to curate things with Matt, you know, doing this doing this podcast, which we would not be doing if we had won because I wouldn't have time for it. Yeah. I wouldn't have time to, to, to see and, and experience so many different things, to keep my eye open, to talk to a lot of different people. 
just to be available for the past, you know, nine months, nine, ten months now going on, which is crazy. It's just remarkable. It's remarkable. We are so much better now than we were then. You know, two years ago, we raised the south of a half a million dollars. If you recall, I mean, it took thousands of phone calls from from my team and I to even get to that point. Yeah. Two years ago, so we and that's we, in the first uh, help set the context. Yes, two for years our, ago, for that, our, that was in the first quarter, one of the first quarters that I announced um, two years ago when I ran for Congress. So this was in this was in 2019. Yeah. It was Q3 of 2019, yeah. and we raised a good amount of money, which was you know oh, almost a half a million dollars, which is which is which still put us especially in the top for 1%. a first a first time candidate. First that's time incredible. Candidate, you no, would take that all no day. No name ID, day. nothing. Yeah. That's in, that's phenomenal. To double that. To double that, it's amazing. It's amazing, yeah. and I think it just becomes. It comes from experience. It comes from we we ran, we tried the best we could, Randy. We did. It, we, did we, we we put our hearts and soul in this thing. People saw that, yeah. and when I walk into a room, many rooms now, or make phone calls, it's of course I got your back again. I'm sorry. I'm so sad you you didn't win the first time, and now I'm I'm going to give you twice as much this time because I know you're going to work your butt off for it. Yeah, that kind of. That kind of, of growth is, is something that we didn't have last time. But you only get that through losing. Yes. That's that's where you really understand the character of a person. Yeah. yeah. When times are good, it's hard to see somebody's character. Yeah. The way you really see somebody's character is when things flip on their on their on their backs and you have to really get yourself up. That's when you can really see somebody's character and what they're made of. Yes. And don't get it wrong, there's still doubters out there. Haters gonna hate, man. There's still doubters out there, Rendon. Disappointingly to me, some people that I thought, I mean, were for, for sure would be back. I don't have to audition for them again. Like I, uh, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay though because we, it's not going to stop what we're doing. We're still going to work harder than anybody else. We're still going to make the most phone calls. We're still going to get in, in front of more people. Yeah. We are nothing is going to stop us from doing and executing. The way we should. Not only is it okay, it's grounding. It's grounding. And it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. The only time Th- it's thanks, Jocko. The, thanks, Jocko. Yeah. <laughs> you like it's that? Good. It's good. Good. The only time it sucks is when people that are in your inner circle who you didn't think that they were capable of do that. Yeah. But for everybody else, for if there's doubters and haters and things like that, that's fine. That's good. That that's keeps fine. you. That keeps you sharp. Yeah, I, 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 I have become, I was about to say I like distance running. I don't like distance running. I can't stand distance running. I do it so that I can stay a certain size. Like, yeah. That's why. And so that I can keep myself in good cardiovascular shape so that I can spend time with my kids and do things that, that we should all be able to enjoy as a family. Yeah. There has never been a time, the reason why I don't particularly like it is because there's never been a time where I've gone on a run and something didn't hurt. Sucks. Yeah. But that's good. That's good. You have to fight through it every time. Because every time that happens, every morning, like waking up this morning, every time I have to fight through it. Mm-hmm. And every day because of that, I'm a little bit sharper. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit stronger. I'm a little bit more experienced. Yep. Mentally, I can handle a little bit more. That's important. So also tell us a little bit about uh, about endorsements. Who's getting on board, man? Got to hold off on that. Okay. Until it actually happens. Okay. So we're, we're, we're going to table this for next week. Yeah, yeah. There's none that we can talk about now, though? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. I get that, I, they got to happen first. Okay. And then we could talk about it. Okay. It's kind, of, it's kind of a general rule here. Yeah, well, let's queue up next but week. It's gonna uh, be, but next week, should, next week should be. Listener, you hear that? <laughs> it should be. <laughs> <laughs> You should, you tune should, in, you, tune in, same bat time, same, same bat, bat channel. channel. <laughs> You'll be there. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting as as also as you think about running, you're or as you're in the process of running, you're also in a position where you have to see everything that's going on in Congress right now. Yeah. And I tell you what's been very interesting for me to see is the Democratic Party right now is in a position where they're literally trying to define who they are. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You have a. It's not looking good, too. By the way, it's not looking good at all. Because it's not looking good. It's not looking good at all because Joe Biden did what he needed to do to win an election, mm-hmm. and what he needed to do to win an election was to appeal to the more moderate side of the Democratic Party. He did, and that's what he did. And and look, I, I'll tell you. 
And, re- and some Republicans too, by the way. Absolutely. And some Republicans saw that and they said, okay, that's something that is a, a, that is appealing to me. Because I'll tell you, we still live in a country where an avowed socialist is not going to get elected here. No. It's not going to happen. And it should never happen. Okay. And, and you basically take somebody who is a self-proclaimed democratic socialist or whatever that means. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's dangerous. And you're allowing that person to have a robust message and microphone within your party. And still, this is happening. Still- so Joe Biden runs as somebody who will be appealing to the moderate piece of our country, both Republican and Democratic. Yeah. Okay. And then as time goes on, and as we start thinking about infrastructure bills and budgets, the individuals who are getting the loudest microphones are the ones that aren't on the more moderate side yeah. of that conversation. And that's a problem. And then and Joe Biden's policy is actually starting to reflect more of the far socialist side of this. Absolutely. Give you an example, Raymond. This is I've been meaning to talk about this. You know, on Saturday, went to go see the Fight Naggies play Whoop. up up in College Good. Station. Good for you. Okay. Awesome game. Yeah. Obviously, if you go to if you go if you have an opportunity to go to an Aggie game, none like Aggie Land. Not gonna lie, it gets kind of weird every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie, they do it's some weird stuff, right? It's it, it's, it is some culty stuff. They all touch each other and it's saw like, varsity's it's, it's horns the, it's off. It's a squid game of college it, football. Yes, it, <laughs> we'll get on that here in a second. <laughs> we'll definitely like, talk about. I'm squid. still watching, but but it, it's making me uncomfortable. But I but I'm still watching. <laughs> not only am I still watching, <laughs> I'm enjoying. Kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's just like it's like it's it's, it's the band. Halftime show, which I mean, watching the Aggie band, I, I'm a symmetry guy. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Other, it may not be other people's cup of tea. I love it. But watching the tube return is yeah. He does a, <laughs> it. Gets cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah. It's so good. It's, it's cool. Yeah, I, I like it. It's weird, but it's great. Yeah. But at one point, we're in the we're in the fourth quarter, and you could also tell that that they've upped their game. Like, like the stadium is 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 really up to date. You know, yeah. the classic big jumbotron. What I found to be really cool, though, was it's like they have a live DJ now. Oh, really? And at certain parts of the game, I mean, they are playing some really cool music, like hit music, like like some EDM stuff. You know, they're playing hip hop. They're playing Drake. It, I mean, wow. it was pretty cool. And you're looking over at, the, at all the students, and it's hilarious. It's going crazy. You know, all the lyrics. It's awesome. They're playing, like, all kinds of really cool stuff. And we're talking about 80,000 people with towels waving, yeah. freaking out at yeah. one point in the fourth quarter. Su- a su- was, super spreader event. Da- oh, wait, how'd you know I was going here? How'd you- <laughs> By the way, we don't rehearse this stuff. We just we just start talking. It's like, get out of my head. Get out of my head. Okay, well, 80,000 people, I not a mask in sight. Not a mask in sight. No COVID check, no nothing. I'm certain the majority of the student body was not sober because this game was at six o'clock. Oh, that's the worst. So why was, would you even do that? So, to it was, <laughs> so it was something else. Yeah. And it was amazing, right? And we're there watching this, and then I'm looking up, Brendan, and I'm like, oh man, no masks. Nobody asked if no vaccine passports, mandates. Here's eighty thousand people. And I, and I remember calling Matt. Are you sure this wasn't held in the Roman Coliseum? It rented might as well. How have do been. you get 80,000 people with six feet of distance in between each one? Rent. Funny. They're <laughs> distance. I was just wondering. Distance. So it wasn't in the Coliseum? It wasn't. All right. I, it's, it's fascinating, okay? Yeah. And so everyone's waving were their chan- towels. Were they chanting, let's go, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that here in a second as well. We'll, we'll give the clean version of that. But waving their towels, go, it, go, going crazy. And I'm, I'm like, they're on the refrigerator trucks out front. Hmm. And two weeks from now, we're going to be right here, back here at Aggie Land doing, doing, doing the exact same thing. No. Nobody's going to die from COVID. No, there's no mass, you know, mass issue here. There's no super spreader event. And at the same time as I'm at this game, California is implementing a vaccine mandate. Where are we living? Yeah. And doing one for kids too in middle school and high school. This is ins- that's this is insane. Yeah. This is insane. Yeah. 
And what I really hope is that people wake up and realize that somebody's lying to you. Yeah. I also want to say this. I'm going to be very clear about something. You and I vaccinated. We've talked about this. Yeah. I don't, don't have an issue with it. At this point, if you're an adult and you're not vaccinated, you're not getting vaccinated. Oh, absolutely. D okay, so this ship has sailed. Yeah. Based on what we've seen, based on what we've known, you're not getting vaccinated. So, and it's kind of like, what's the point now of basically publicly shaming people? You got it. You, and, and it's on both sides, right? You it's, got it. it's publicly shaming people in the black community who decided they don't want to do it. It's publicly shaming uh, uh, people on the far right who have decided that that's not what they want and they don't desire. Look, we've gotten to a good enough answer to continue forward with our society. So let's stop shutting down the country and killing the stock market. Hmm. Amen. And move forward. Amen. We've gotten to a good enough solution. Like once again, that Amen. shaming people and and <clears throat> and rubbing their face in the poop like their dogs is not going to help anything so, at this point. And, and by and by the way, COVID numbers are significantly down. Yeah. And it's up to you to assume your own risk. This has got to stop. And every week that I'm watching college football games. And then two or three weeks later, during the incubation period of COVID, I don't see refrigerator trucks at Virginia Tech or in the big house in Michigan or at or in Aggieland or at the University of Texas or university fill in the blank or there, Death Valley. Well, the, I, I, there's one correction to that. Huh. After UT played Arkansas, there were some refrigerated <laughs> trucks there. <laughs> Cause they killed the they killed the long ones. They killed the long ones. That's pretty good. Let the bodies hit the floor. That's pretty good. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's pretty good. Man, that's pretty good. Man, there was beef for dinner over in Arkansas. <laughs> Man, <laughs> people were were Sorry, mounting all sorts of stuff on oh, their no. walls. <laughs> I don't know. Is it Longhorns? Golly, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. But this is this is. This is why we're doing this show, too, because for the listener to understand, like, if you remove politics from all this stuff and just, like, look around, it's time. It's, it's, it's time to live your lives. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. And if you don't want to. You don't have to. Then you don't have to. That, that, that's part of being in a free country. Right? Just don't expect, don't expect other people to live by your rules yes. in a low-risk environment. Yeah. And, and there, there's something to be said, too, because, you know, and, and you bring this up. And once again, this this deviates from from people who criticize us on all oh, Republican talking points, blah, 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 blah. Like it, it deviates from that, because to your point, we've both ta taken the vaccine. Yes. We both believe that the vaccine is a marvel of modern science to have a safe, effective vaccine this quickly. I mean, this is something that we'll look back on generations from now and say, wow, that was how really, do we do that? That was really crazy. How, how that happened. We, how, a, pub, a public private partnership. Yeah. To get to get to get the fastest, pro probably technologically most advanced vaccine we've seen. Yeah. Ever. With a number of different distribution methods, like all, mRNA and all sorts of different, it, it's fascinating. A, a and, marvel. And and one of the things that that we see now that I find very interesting in California, I'm going to go back to to California and talk about them a bit. Now that they're implementing vaccine mandates for kids in middle school and high school, it's really interesting to see. I've always been in the camp, and you know how how I feel about this. You know, we've had vaccines for years yeah. in schools, okay? Yeah. For measles, mumps, rebel, all sorts of things. We've had vaccines for, for years. And, by, and I believe I, that kids should be vaccinated, too. And I right. think kids should be vaccinated, right? And that's why there, there's always been a piece of me. It goes back to what we were talking about with Bernie, Bernie Sanders. There's always been a piece of me that has liked the consistency of anti-vaxxers, period. Right. Yeah. It's like, I don't believe in vaccines. My kids aren't vaccinated, and they're not getting the— I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But the fact that, hey, you'll get a vaccine that was developed in the 1920s and you're yeah. cool with sending your kid to school that way, but now all of a sudden you have a problem <laughs> with this one because they're putting a microchip in your body. So you'd rather take, you know, something yeah. that, that, that livestock use in order to remove parasites, okay? Like, look, okay, that gets a little weird for me, man. Yeah. Like everybody has their line. Yeah. That, that's my line. The thing that I find interesting, what, what doesn't change what I think that we always need to pay attention to is how do people in your society feel about this? Because that's part of what a democracy is. Mm -hmm. Okay, collective. Yeah, the collective. It's a, it's our collective we the, we the, feel we the about these things. Yeah. yeah. To your point about vaccines, 
over 80 percent of adults believe that a vaccine is a good idea mm -hmm. you know how i know they believe a vaccine is a good idea because they got vaccinated because they put it in their body yes okay so they at least believe that there is is merit to doing that. at least one shot okay right like like the majority of adults in america yes have gotten a shot now even though we know this and we're doing this we're still trying to have draconian measures on companies to make people do this it's unbelievable even though as a society collectively yeah. we believe that this is a good idea and collectively most people have so this is something that we can, go ahead i'm sorry go ahead yeah. go ahead go ahead the other piece of this was california california now is mandating these vaccines for middle schoolers and high schoolers well over 90 percent of people in california believe that their children should be vaccinated from smallpox and measles and mumps do you know how I know they believe this? Because their kids have been vaccinated. Because they take them to get these shots. Yes. Over 50% of people right now in this country do not believe that middle schoolers and high schoolers should be vaccinated. And I'm kind of, and I'm in that camp. I'm actually in that camp. Okay. I'm in that camp. That's a problem. Yeah. States like California shouldn't be shoving that down people's well, that's throats. That's a great point. That's a problem. So, and do you know why I'm in that camp too? Mm. I, because it's not my body. We're talking about ki our, our kids now. And what I do think, I mean, again, I think the vaccine is fine and the CDC says that it's fine. And if my doctor and my children's doctors say that it's okay for them to get it, then that's, that's who I choose to consult and that's yeah. who I trust. One issue that I have is that, but, but measles, mumps, all these other vaccines, these, these have been around for generations now. I, I'm far more willing to experiment with myself and far less willing to experiment with my children. Well, there's another there's another piece of this too that that is a con it is it is a concern for me. The death rate for children I was for just children. Get, I was getting there next. Like, look, ninety nine point nine percent. You're not I, dying. I, I mean, kids are. Kids I mean, are it is not affecting children. If if it were affecting children in a different way, different this would be a completely. By the way, this would be a completely different conversation. Yeah. Did you see? And I sent you that that video. The NBA player for the Orlando Magic. He's awesome, blanking on his he? name. He's like number. One, he's, he's number also, one. He's on also it. the guy that stood for the national anthem too. Is that the same, same guy? Same guy. I didn't realize that. It's the same guy. What's his name? We got it. Hey guys, can we get the name of? Um, he, he plays for the Orlando Magic. I, I sent you a video of him basically talking. Yeah, I watched. Yeah, yeah. About covid and why he doesn't want to get, get and why he doesn't want to get vaccinated it's so reasonable and basically he was saying look i am a young athlete his name's uh jonathan isaac yes jonathan isaac i'm a young athlete in my physical prime yes. i've researched how covid affects people he's had covid that are no oh, i'm getting there i've researched how covid affects people of my age and my fitness level yeah i've already had covid so i have the antibodies that are necessary to fight off this virus and i believe that putting a vaccine in my body is more risky than not doing it at this point in my life totally reasonable and i'm just kind of like and once again everybody wants to brand me as being an anti-vaxxer for saying this dude i have the vaccine i got the virus i'm just saying yeah i'm just saying yeah. that i listened to his rationale and it makes sense to me. So, and then also, Rendon, we're also was seeing. It, was it Bradley Beal? Of, of no, no, that, that was that was that was no. that was, oh, that was okay. a different guy. Okay. No, no, it was from, from Orlando Magic. Yeah, yeah. But Bradley Beal also had had a very had Bradley Beal also had a very similar argument. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is this: now that we're seeing breakthrough cases with COVID as well, his argument even stands stands even more. Just because you have the vaccine doesn't mean you're not going to get COVID. Yes. Now, now what is proven is that how vaccines work is that you. Or you have a lesser case of the virus if you get it or your symptoms aren't nearly as strong or usually you're actually asymptomatic. But if you've already had the virus and if you get the vaccine, you can still get the virus. His point is well taken. Yeah. Yeah. Point's very well taken and very and reasonable. Well, it's an educated, it's an, it's an, it's educated, an educated opinion. Risk assessment, right? Uh, and he's decided and you to can't defense. make him do this. Yeah. You can't make him do this. Yeah. And, and I tell you, it's always interesting because making people do things and mandating things, we need to be really careful. Yeah. Oh man, we need we need to be very careful on on what is mandated and why. One thing that I've been tracking recently is the debt ceiling. Yeah. Right. So Janet Yellen, the Secretary of the Treasury, 
has said that we should do away with the debt ceiling, right? Yeah. For years and years and years and years in this country, like mid 1910s, right? We've had a debt ceiling because you need to get approval if you're going to spend a certain amount of money above and beyond the budget that we have set out because it's responsible for a country, just like it's responsible for a person to manage levels of debt and know what you're spending money on. A credit limit. Right? And so now we're getting in a position where we're saying, well, we don't want to hold the government or the operations of the government hostage by saying that we can't borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow more money in an unaccountable way. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Okay? And if we feel that we're holding the whole process hostage as a result of that, well, then let's figure out how to compromise to pass a decent budget. Yeah. Okay? You're looking at, at Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin right now. Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Of West Virginia. Country road. Take me home. <laughs> to a place. I belong. <laughs> West Virginia. Okay? Mountain mama. Now, now <laughs> this is, I tell you, I tell you what's fascinating, okay? It's a great song, by the way. It is a great song. I never crush that. Joe Manchin is somehow a Democratic elected official in the most Republican state in the entire country. Yeah. Like, Donald Trump won West Virginia by 40 points. Yeah. So, so you're saying it was close? Didn't have 40 points. Well, it wasn't close. He won <laughs> by, by 40, 40 points. points. Okay? Yeah. And the Democratic Party. Sounds like my new district. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> and the Democratic Party. 20, 20 points. 20 points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give, or potato, potato, give, give or take. Potato. Give or take. Whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. Somehow the Democratic Party is trying to tell Joe Manchin in this district that it's somehow in his best political interest to go along with everything that they say. It's ridiculous. Kirsten Cinema. Same thing. Right? Arizona, the seat of the Maverick, rest in peace, John McCain. It's a different, it's a different state. Okay? Yeah, it's a different state. And you're telling these people you should sign on to bad legislation that's out of touch with your constituents and what you really believe. Yeah. Because, guys, this is the way that we're moving. We're moving further left. Get on board. That ain't going to happen, too. And now they're going to have egg on their face because they're saying no, as they should. As they should. It's, it's actually their job to represent the people in their state. Yes. It's not their job to represent Bernie Sanders. It's not, it's not, it's not their yeah. job to represent the Northeast or Vermont. Yeah. It's their job to represent West Virginia. Yeah. This is their job to represent Arizona. That's their job. And that's the beauty of a democracy. That's the beauty of federalism. You, you don't do it, you're gone. That's the beauty vote of the system. Vote for somebody else. Vote vote, vote, you, you get voted out. Yeah. Both of them will get voted out in a heartbeat. Yeah. But they get to stay even though they're Democrats in, in purple. Well, Kristen Sinema is in a purpley state. Yeah. West Virginia is in a red state, <laughs> squarely. But he gets to stay Crimson. because people know. <laughs> <laughs> Crimson, not red. Crimson. Crimson. <laughs> he gets to stay in a red state. You know, put that in perspective. Wasn't the old governor a Democrat, and then he changed and become a Republican? Yeah. The Republican of West Virginia, uh, the governor of West Virginia. I can't I can remember his name, but he was a Democrat, and then he, he flipped Republican just to make it easy on himself. <laughs> It's like, look, I, I'm, look sick, guys, I'm sick. I'm I, sick of playing. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Let me just let me just get it over with. Um, but that's their job. Well, and these are the reindeer games that 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 now you see a party that has a significant amount of tension dealing with. You have a president who has a very low approval rating right now, mm -hmm. and it continues to drop. And it doesn't get any better with the unemployment levels that we have. It doesn't get better with the market. Uh, where it is right now, it doesn't get better with the handling of, of COVID right now. Right, have you they, seen have you, have you seen these these F Joe Biden chants? No. Okay, I'm going to sing you a montage. Let's go, Brandon. I know that, that's this is. It's I will send it, I will send this to you because I figure you you weren't you weren't no. into this. <laughs> it's rough. Football games. In football games across the country, 
uh, um, NASCAR races, public events. They did it at you the have Ryder people, Cup. yeah, yeah, the, they had that at the Ryder Cup golf events, sporting events. You are seeing people that are chanting, "F Joe Biden." Wow. And I'm, I bring this up because we've had some very interesting personalities and some high-profile figures and people that were Democrats that weren't in favor of the Republican in charge and Republicans that weren't in favor of the Democrat in charge. Yeah. Okay, we had people, we had Republicans that couldn't stand Barack Obama. We had Democrats that could not stand Donald John Trump. At a football game, yeah. you weren't hearing this. Wow. And it just goes to show you that tyranny has no power. Hmm. Ha, ha, it has no part, no power, and it has no party. Hmm. Not in this country. Tyranny is not the direction that people want to see. The government mandating you to do things, Democrat or Republican, young or old, we don't want to see that. We are seeing this in places where there are a lot of young people that actually tend to be more liberal, if you call it. But just because they're liberal and just because they may have a president that's liberal, that doesn't mean that they want their freedoms trampled upon. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're seeing this. And it's happening it's happening all over the country. And I have never I've actually never seen that in my life. Yeah, it's like like I've seen some one offs here and there, F this person, yeah. forget this person, forget that person. Yeah. I don't like this. And like I've I've seen the one offs, I've seen the tweets, I've seen the social media stuff here and there. I've never heard chance in yeah. unison after <laughs> wow. the Star Spangled for Banner. For games. For games. Yeah. You sounded like a dove. You said forget. Remember, remember when we used to get the, the clean edits of, of albums? You stupid sucker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to clean it. I'm trying to be as nice. I'm trying to clean it up as best as possible. It's, it's a family show. It's a family show. It is a family show. You know, I was uh, speaking, <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of family shows, not so much. I was watching... Squid games? Huh? Squid Games? No, we can get there though. Okay. I was like, uh, I'm you, jumping the gun. <laughs> yeah, you're jumping the gun. Yeah, you know, I am. I am an ardent supporter and have been for years of Saturday Night Live. And part of the funny thing for me about Saturday Night Live as it continues is, people on the far right somehow think that Saturday Night Live is liberal. And people on the far left somehow think that Saturday Night Live is far right. So it's hilarious to watch because in the cold open, of course, look, whoever's the president, they're going to make fun of. Yeah. And it's going to be hilarious. Yeah. Right? In the cold open this week, I mean, they were flamethrowing Biden about, uh, and they had somebody playing Curse and Cinema and Joe Manchin yeah. about having I saw no idea uh, what they want in the, in the budget bill. Yeah, and Joe Biden's trying to say, we're all together on this. We all want the same thing. And, and they're all and just... Off. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. Well, Michael Che on the Weekend Update killed it this week, and he said something that really made me laugh. And every now and then you have these ones where you just go back to over and over again because it is really funny. And perhaps this is a bit of a, a look into what I think is funny. But he was talking about Joe Biden's plan. And he said... <laughs> Who thought it was a good idea for a plan to be named Build Back Better for a guy that stutters? That's kind of funny. And when he said that, I was like... That's kind of funny. I was like, it's, that's that's representative of, yeah. of kind of what we're seeing more broadly. Yeah. Right? Like, who who is making these decisions? Who's doing this? Yes. And even broader, as we look forward to the next election, who's next in the hopper? Yeah. Is it the borders are? I don't think so. <laughs> the borders are? Who won't, go to, who won't go to the border? Who won't go to the border? <laughs> You you know honestly, man. Oh man. You know you know the you know the best way to <laughs> keep great. Kamala Harris out of office. What? Tell her the inauguration is being held on the border. She'll, <laughs> she'll never go. go. She'll never go. <laughs> she'll never go. It's but but like what what is it what is the next what's yeah. the next step? Where do we go Where do we go from here? And I and I get I kind of get what you're saying too. You know, like I think the short answer for me is we'll take back the house. And that that's the. That's the interim answer, but you're right. You're like, like, what's the long-term solution to kind of getting us back on track to where people, Democrat or Republican, people can agree that this person and th this individual wants to do what's in the best entry 
Yeah, but what's in the best? I'm sorry, what's in the best interest of the United States of America? Yeah. Who's that entity? Who's that person? Yeah. That's it. I, I don't really care what party. Who is going to, for lack of a better phrase, like who is going to put our country and our needs first? Yeah. And we and we are seeing not in our country right now, and I would say, shoot, in the past fifty or sixty years. This is the most contentious that it's been in our country. It has. It is. Right? I will admit that. And and I think part of this is the way that we've been able to demonize other groups of people. If you're on the left, you're a socialist. If you're on the right, you're a fascist. Like, we are just throwing this stuff around, and they're, they're bombs that we're throwing on people, on our own people. Yeah. And it's but causing— But in America, the socialist— are the fascists. <laughs> Einhorn is Finkel. Einhorn is Finkel. <laughs> Finkel, <laughs> they Finkel they is They don't know. Einhorn. They don't know. <laughs> but it, it's really one of these situations yeah. where, where <clears throat> that's one of my biggest fears and remains one of my biggest fears about where we are as a country is how we're willing to talk about each other. This is why we need better leaders to come together who are willing to hold hands, grip hands, and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the polling number to the extent that we believe polling data. I do kind of more now. If I, we, think, it, I think it's more accurate now than it was. Yeah. If we look at the polling data, you know, there, it's it's pretty it's pretty dicey looking the way people think about each other more broadly. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Biden's polling numbers are horrific. Yeah. Hor like 31% horrific. Yeah. I mean, that's as bad as you, you, you can't get lower than that. Right. Like, let's say it's like it's like the diehard left are the only ones that are remaining loyal to, to you at, at this point. Like, that's how bad it is. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's I believe I think it's 10 points under where Trump was at this time. And Trump was never one who had great polling numbers. No, he wouldn't. No, he wasn't. He was at 41. And everybody was like, that's that's horrible. Yeah. So, so, so like this is where we are. And so change is coming. But when we when we get the change, what do we do with it? Well, and, and and I'll throw this out. Like we have to do something with this in the House. And if somebody is running for Congress, we're going to have the majority in a couple of years, in a year. What are we going to do with it, though? Yeah. Like, like, we can't waste this. Yeah. We have to act swiftly, and we have to act directly in favor of the American people. We have to. Yeah. Or else people are going to start believing in us, too. Yeah. And we allow the pendulum to shift the other way. And we end up right back at square one. It's not just talking about how bad the other side is. It's about what are we going to do about it? Oh yeah, you can't just throw darts, man. Yes. There's a lot. There's a lot of blame to go around. And and one thing, and I know we're we're limited on time, but one thing that that I think we can especially talk a little bit about uh, a little bit later on too. Squid is games. The, well, definitely the squid games. <laughs> yes. Watch the squid games if you have not. We'll cover it next uh, week. Yeah. What you got? Yeah. The the Facebook whistleblower case, right? Yeah, Frances Hagen, who yeah, uh, good point. I did not. I did not know her. She was at Harvard Business School. I was there. She's a product manager at Facebook, and she was brought in to really look at how Facebook addresses elections mm -hmm. and the contention associated with that. And essentially, she has filed for whistleblower protection, and she's going to be testifying in front of Congress this week mm -hmm. because a she says she wants to make Facebook better, but also she wants to highlight the fact that that she's seen in practices and internal memos that Facebook doesn't care about what its product is doing to people and the dissension in our country. Mm -hmm. and it only cares about the bottom line and the money that it's making. Yeah. This is something that your point that we really need to be thinking about from the standpoint of, of the contention that's in our country and who we allow to have power and access over our information yeah. and the type of untrue information that they're willing to sow and spin out in the name of making money. Yeah. Because only the sexy stuff sells, man. Us yeah. sitting up in, up here talking about like, hey, everybody's great and everything's good. Nobody wants to see that, man. Yeah. And we need to be very careful about what we're we're letting come into our ears and what we're seeing with our eyes. I agree. We need to be very careful about that. Take us out. And remember, smiles are contagious, so make someone's day. God bless you. Thank you.